Yo Joe, my friends, Jared here with Fanboys Forever, and today we're going to be having a little look at a custom project that I think you'll find really easy to do and really effective. Uh, you may be thinking to yourself, hey, they've not done a Sergeant Slaughter yet for G.I. Joe Classified, the new six-inch uh, series of figures that Hasbro's just released. Well, they've not, but with a few simple modifications and buying an extra roadblock, you too can have your own Sergeant Slaughter for your G.I. Joe six inch classified line. So let's go ahead and go over it. So the first thing you may be thinking is, well, that's not exactly a classic looking Sergeant Slaughter. Well, he's not. As a matter of fact, this Sarge is based specifically on the Warthog a vehicle driver Sarge. And any of you guys who had this Sergeant Slaughter growing up, uh, I've always actually considered this Sarge's actual field costume that he wears with the Joes. You can see he's actually got like a combat vest and he's got the ammo belt and the knife. And to me, and a little red uh, kind of shoulder pad, but to me this all seemed like what he actually wore into combat. Uh, Sarge's other outfit with the black tank top or the blue tank top all seemed more like uh, maybe what he would wear at the slaughterhouse to train some of the new recruits. And this kind of seemed like, okay, well, Sarge is, you know, getting down to business. Um, so to me, that's what this is based on. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to need for this particular custom. You're going to need an extra roadblock figure, or if you just hate this new look for roadblock, I actually really like it. But if you can't stand it, just use yours. Anyway, though, I got an extra one. And you're also going to need the WWE Legends 6-inch Sergeant Slaughter from Mattel that they did several years ago. And there are several uh, cheap ones on eBay that are very, very, uh, maybe not complete or anything like that. You won't even need his uh, little whistle accessory that he comes with because there's no real room for that in this figure. Just make sure he has the glasses and the hat. He doesn't even really need the elbow pads, but if he has them, that's great. So let's talk about what you got to do. So the very first thing is with the Sergeant Slaughter figure uh, from WWE Legends, the six inch one, you'll notice that he's way too tall for classified. As a matter of fact, the actual Sergeant Slaughter figure that you get is more like up here. And he's just way too big for these guys. But there's a very, very easy way to solve this problem. All you've gotta do is pop off the legs that WWE Sarge comes with and you just boil the figure, of course, in a little bit of water. For me, all I do is I just heat up some water in the microwave and I kind of set the Sarge figure in there and then I just pop off the boots. It comes uh, off very easily, just little pegs that plug into it. But there is one sort of com complicated next step. Let me go ahead and pop this guy out right here and I'll show you what I did. When you actually pop this thing off, there's actually way more of a blue peg down here. It probably goes to about this far. What I did was I just took some uh, nippers you would use for like a model kit, and I just got it in between the blades and actually cut just a little bit of it off. And that way, you're left with just a smooth bottom. So it almost kind of looks like just like a plug. And you'll notice that the reason we're doing that is because here's the roadblock I used. His look almost exactly the same so you're cutting it and it's actually amazing because they're practically the same peg if you just cut off the bottom of Sarge's. This also means that you can pretty easily pop his old leg back on if you really wanted to and you could reverse him completely back to being a regular Sergeant Slaughter if you wanted to. And of course, you will also boil and pop these legs off of Roadblock. The reason we're doing this is to shorten Sergeant Slaughter, okay? And then once you have this bottom part cut off, it's always easier if you have these in hot water as well. Now, notice that there's no gap here and you actually retain all of the swivel articulation. And this thing is really in there really well. And it's amazing that it fits so perfectly. So now Sarge is the perfect height. The next reason that you're gonna need the other roadblock figure is for his vest. Now, there's a couple of different ways to remove the vest. The way that I did it was I actually, once again, using that boiling water from the microwave, actually just put roadblock in there. And you're not only able to get the arms off right here, but you're even able to remove the shoulders. So if you get rid of all of those and pop off the head, this vest slides right off. Now, you're left with a roadblock like this, 
So you could actually use this for another custom. I know some people have been uh, doing the tank top look for Roadblock, which I'm sure Hasbro is going to give that to us anyway. But I don't think they're going to give us a Warthog Driver Sarge. <laughs> so, I mean, who knows? I hope they prove me wrong. But anyway, though, once that vest is off, here's the thing. You can't fit it over the WWE Legend Sarge. There's really no way to do it. Uh, he's just a little too wide. As you can see, Roadblock is actually a little bit thinner in the middle than you would think he would be. That's why the vest uh, kind of is so form-fitting. So you have to cheat it a little bit. All you gotta do, take a pair of scissors and you'll see what I did here. I just cut right here on the seam line where they connected it at the factory. Here's the thing, you'll probably never notice it in your display. And there's another thing we're gonna do here in a second that'll make it even harder to notice. All right, the next thing you'll have to do is obviously you will have to paint this vest. So if you're going to be painting Sergeant Slaughter's vest, what kind of paint should you use? Well, you can use the very cheapest acrylic paint you can find. Uh, here's like an example of something you might find at Walmart. This is what I actually use, Deco Art Americana. I think it was from Walmart. The color that I used here is called dark chocolate. Uh, super cheap acrylic paint. And the great part is that it doesn't dry tacky at all. As a matter of fact, this is totally dry to the touch. I also used these two paint markers. Also found these at Walmart. They're just called painters. They're acrylic markers. Unfortunately, they dry a little tacky. So use them sparingly and kind of check your work as you go. Now I've added all sorts of little touches, but I've actually left some of it completely unaltered. Um, the parts I've left unaltered. Anything you see is red is still the same from the old roadblock vest. As a matter of fact, I'll do a little comparison here. All the red, I left the red in the middle just because I thought it looked cool. Left the red shoulder pad on the back, added a little more detail, but I left the red, uh, painted this brown, added a little silver highlight here. I've also did a little bit of green on the belt so that we can have it be sort of an homage to the original, just like this. Now notice that his shoulder pad is on the opposite side of the original, but that's totally okay. He even has the knife sheath that the original has right here, only it's on the other side. So I just kind of painted some highlights on there. I had a silver paint marker that I added a few little rivets and things, especially there. I used a gold paint marker to get kind of a uh, gold buckle that kind of matches those boots right there. So it kind of brings the look together. I actually left all this the same because if this is supposed to be classified Sarge, he's gonna have those little techie bits. So I just thought it would kind of make him fit in a little bit better with the rest of the team. All right, the next part you'll wanna paint is Sarge's hat that he comes with. Of course, the original had a dark uh, green hat. That is of course not at all the color that Warthog Driver Sarge has. It's more of this kind of <laughs> baby puke green. I actually did about a half and half mix of these two. This I got from Walmart, Apple Barrel Lime Tree. It's kind of a vibrant looking uh, greenish yellowish color. And I just mixed it with that same brown I talked about a minute ago. If you do about a half and half mix, just kind of toy with it. And if you have a Warthog Driver Sarge, I just kind of had him out and compared it to it. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty close really. And uh, I tried to match it as best I could while not maybe going so yellow. And I just repainted Sarge's hat here. I also had to repaint the little cord that goes around the hat black. And if you don't do that, you can see I still have paint on my fingers. But uh, if you don't do that, it looks kind of weird because you have a sculpted cord there and you sort of, you want it to still have that realistic look. Also had to repaint the little gold uh, emblem right there on the front. Uh, I just used that same gold paint marker that I shown you earlier. Here's a little uh, tip don't paint this inside part where you're going to plug the head in. If you do, there's a chance you're going to get some green acrylic paint on Sarge's uh, balding head up here. <laughs> so uh, I left that totally open. That just goes on like that. I painted Sarge's sunglasses this silver color, and this was done with that silver painter marker that I shown you earlier from Walmart. Uh, I only painted these front lenses. Everything else just remains exactly the same. And here's the great part, since it's a hard plastic, it doesn't dry tacky at all. It actually dries uh, very, very well on the glasses. 
couple of other little things I did was I actually painted the handle of Sarge's knife to kind of keep that brown color going. It also kind of hides this kind of gold right here, so it's not too techy looking. I left his elbow pads. I know the original doesn't have that, but I kind of like the look of them. I was sort of particular about what I painted on the belt. Uh, if I thought it kind of didn't look like it should be green, I kind of just left it as if it was some kind of other pouch. And the very last touch for Sarge. So I'm sure that a lot of you, just like me, are big longtime G.I. Joe fans, and you probably have a bag somewhere that looks like this, filled to the brim with all kinds of guns and stuff. However you sort your G.I. Joes, I do Ziploc bags. And as you can see, I have a bunch of bandoliers or, you know, ammo belts in there. So I just picked one. Uh, I think this might have been from either the Retaliation movie line or the 50th line. I'm not sure. I am positive that some uh, eagle-eyed G.I. Joe super fan out there can tell you exactly where this ammo belt is from. So there's a couple of options here. You, of course, want it to look like the original Warthog Driver Sarge, and he has a bandolier ammo belt right across his chest here. You're going to have to drape it from the opposite way because you want that red to still be visible. If you bring it down the other way, you won't be able to see it. Another benefit of this is it sort of covers this techie uh, bit over here just a little bit, kind of uh, brings him down to earth a little. So what you can do is you can actually take this, and you see there's a gap back here, right here. You can actually stuff that in ever so slightly. It kind of drapes then, and I actually drape it to where the knife is still in front of it because that is like the original toy. I then bring it around through here, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You kind of cheat that gap because you can kind of pull it together, bring the arm down, and you'll never see it. So this is your final look right here. So you have a couple of more options for the Sergeant Slaughter figure that I didn't pursue for various reasons. For just ease of use, I didn't bother painting Sarge's legs this tan color right here. Why? Well, sometimes when you're using acrylic paints on uh, movable joints, you're going to have some problems. And sometimes it can be sort of a mess. So I decided not to brave it, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't. If you would like to do that, that might be cool. Or find a donor set of legs from the WWE Legends line from several years ago from Mattel. Maybe there was some khaki colored legs that are exactly the same. I'm no expert, but I'm sure there was plenty of reuse in the line. So that's totally your prerogative. Uh, if you want to try it, I say go for it, but I just wasn't feeling very adventurous. I also sort of like Sarge's blue uh, Marine Corps pants uh, with this outfit. The other thing that you could do, speaking of those gold boots, is the original Sarge has brown boots. If you want to, and I almost did it, but I kind of backed off on it, you can paint these things brown with that acrylic paint. You could do it. Um, just for me, I don't know. I guess to me, if you want him to be a part of the new classified line, this kind of makes him uh, work a little bit with the other guys. You could even just maybe, I don't know, change the shin guards here to a little bit more of a muted color, maybe not so gold. Another option that you have is you could actually pop out Sarge's hands by boiling first. Of course, you don't want to get a broken peg stuck in the wrist joint. That would That's always very aggravating trying to remove. And you could take those out. And then, of course, you could remove Roadblock's hands and you could put them in there so that he could have the red gloves. Now, I tried this, but the one issue is that these red gloves are very, very loose. It's, it's definitely not as perfect a fit as what we had with the boot pegs that go in there. That's kind of a million to one shot that those worked as well as they did. Now, there's nothing stopping you though from bulking up the little joints that come in this with a little bit of super glue, letting it dry, and then plugging it in those uh, slots. So you could do that if you wanted them to have the red gloves and it would kind of match Duke and it would sort of match Roadblock and kind of just make him more uniform with the other guys. It's also probably a good homage to the fingerless gloves that he has here. You could even paint the fingers some kind of flesh tone or even paint the fingerless gloves onto these hands. Me, I didn't feel like he really needed it. So that's another option that you have. All right, final thoughts. Uh, if you guys have any questions, of course, please leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer those questions. Remember, always, always submerge your figure into that hot boiling water from the microwave before you attempt to remove any kind of appendage from the figure. 
you'll thank me for that. Trust me, probably leave it in there for a minute or two to where the joints are very soft. You shouldn't have any difficulty getting those removed. Um, the other thing I'll say is that if you are patient, I think by November, we should be seeing the G.I. Joe classified gung-ho figure. Now, you would do all the same steps if you were using gung-ho as the base and not the Sergeant Slaughter from the WWE Legends line, but there's a couple of things that would be different. For one thing, all you would do is you would just boil and pop off the Sergeant Slaughter head and see if it fits on the peg. For And I did not try it for the Roadblock body. Gung Ho is going to be using the exact same body as Roadblock here. Another good thing is you wouldn't have to cut the side of this vest when you use the Gung Ho figure. So you could do the same paint applications to the vest, slide it on the Gung Ho body, and then add the Sergeant Slaughter head. Uh, and then the skin tones should match up pretty well, but of course there's no way to tell until the figure actually comes out. Uh, those are some options though when it comes out. Till then though, I thought this was kind of a fun alternative version of the Warthog Driver Sergeant Slaughter, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Anyway, hope you all take care, and if you enjoyed this video, please let me know, and I'll try to do more just like it. Yo, Joe.